Hello, insiders, and welcome to our Wednesday edition of Facebook Live. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about tinnitus. But first, um, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name's Daryl. I'm a senior veteran coach here at VACI. I've worked for the company for a while now, and um, before this, I worked for the VA for about 11 years. Uh, six and a half of that I, I did as a uh, rating specialist. Um, so I have a pretty good working knowledge of the rating system. Um, left left the VA because I feel like the VA just treats people like numbers. Now I'm at VCA, VACI and I love working with veterans daily. Um, with me today is, is uh, Coach Mark Mitchell and I'll let him go ahead and introduce himself. What's going on guys? I'm Coach Mark Mitchell. I am a U.S. Air Force veteran. Served from 2012 to 2018 and I was a client with VA Claims Insider and just enjoyed the process so much and realized the impact that the organization had and wanted to become a part of the team. And here I am. Um, I do want to uh, give a little disclaimer as we get going here. I know a lot of you have questions and a lot of you are going to want to ask questions. If you have a question, please put it in the chat. Um, we have several veteran coaches that work for VACI in the chat. Um, they can, they can help answer the questions. Uh, realistically, we're not probably going to be able to get to every question that's asked, but we will sure make an effort. Um, if you if we don't get your question and and you truly want it answered, um, uh, you know you can you can reach out to VACI and and uh, we can see if we can get you an answer for your question. If we, if we don't get to it today, today we're going to be talking about tinnitus. Mark, have you ever filed a claim for tinnitus? I have. I'm actually service connected for tinnitus myself as well. Service connected at 10%? Yes, sir. Right on. So tinnitus also, uh, you might hear some people uh, announce it as tinnitus. Um, essentially, it's the ringing in the ears. And it is actually probably the most commonly claimed condition um, that veterans have. All right. Um, Mark, can you tell me a little bit about your, your tinnitus story? How did you... Uh, what happened? How yes. So in the Air Force, I was a military working dog handler. So between gunfire training, uh, dogs barking in the kennel nonstop, obviously I was exposed to loud noises. Um, didn't really start to impact me until once I got out and I realized in a sales position, having to communicate to people on the phone didn't really work out too well because I'd be talking to these guys, my ears would start ringing, and I realized my peers were still on the phone actively engaged. I had to take a step back and kind of take a moment to let it stop ringing before I could re-engage in the conversation. So that's when I really started to notice the impact that it had, did the research, went online, found, you know, VA Claims Insider and the rest is history. Right on. So you were a dog handler um, and and did you, I'm sorry, did what, what, what happened in service where you, uh, where you initially got your tinnitus, where, where your ears started ringing? So as security forces, I was constantly posted on the flight line. So next to the, the B-1 bombers, which are very, very loud. Um, the gunfire training, obviously weapons qualifications, the, the kennels themselves. I remember that they actually had an individual come out with an instrument that measured the decibels from the barking of the dogs. And it was well above what the standard should have been. So just a, a little bit of everything, I think, just mixed in together. Just the constant exposure from one thing or another. And they didn't provide you with any hearing protection or it was inadequate hearing protection at the time? A little bit of both. It just kind of depends. Sometimes had to do what you got to do. And, you know, if you're in a rush and you got to grab the dog and respond out, you don't really have time to go and grab the ear pro. So you just snap the dog up and then get onto the, get onto the road and that's it. <laughs> right on. You mean military rushes people? <laughs> just kidding. And so what are you, if you don't mind me asking, what is your current percentage just for the tinnitus? 10%. All right. So those of you who don't know, 10% for tinnitus is the maximum scheduler um, evaluation that, that the VA will give. Um, there are some way outside the circumstances, conditions where they can ask for an extra scheduler, but those are so rare. Um, in my six and a half years of rating claims, I, I never had one. Um, so 10% is the maximum that can be given. Um, there, there are certain things, and like Mark kind of alluded to it, there are certain things that happen in the military that can cause tinnitus. 
Um, one of those things would be hearing loss. Um, you could you could actually have hearing loss, and it, it could mm -hmm. potentially cause you to have tinnitus as well. Uh, whiplash from a car accident. Um, whiplash from you know your your transport running over a, a IED. Um, traumatic brain injury can cause tinnitus, and there's also a condition out there called Meniere's disease, where tinnitus is a is a huge part of that condition. All right, with tinnitus there really is no cure. Um, and, and all of the, the symptoms are subjective. So they have no way of testing. When you went for your tinnitus examination, Mark, did they, did they try to test you for tinnitus? There is no test for tinnitus. So like you said, it's subjective. There's no way to prove or to show for sure of the tinnitus and, and the symptoms that they cause. Uh, I do think it's important to sit show or to tell that when I did go in for my CMP for tinnitus, I still had to do a hearing test, which I thought was weird since there was no test. But after further guidance and, and knowledge, that, that's a standard practice that whenever you do claim for tinnitus, not every time, but they can send you for your hearing test as well. Absolutely. So when you do file a claim, um, the VA has, a, has kind of a policy on. So if you're, client, if you're just filing a claim for hearing loss, um, the VA also takes a claim for hearing loss as a claim for tinnitus. Um, but if you just file for tinnitus, they don't they don't consider that as a claim for hearing loss. Tinnitus can be a standalone claim. Now, when you go for your CMP, just like you did, when you go for your CMP, uh, they will give you a hearing loss examination. And I have seen sometimes where uh, the the CMP examiner has ruled out tinnitus because there is no evidence of hearing loss. Um, but that's you know that's actually a, a debatable. Um, evaluation you could you can probably like add a review on that yeah you can fight that so um there are different ways that that a veteran can be service connected for tinnitus um first off you can have an acoustic trauma while in service during service okay documented in your service treatment records or documented somewhere and and uh excuse me um, then they can do it on a direct basis that way. If, you know, if it shows tinnitus, like you, uh, you get out of service and when you do your exit examination, you have complaints of tinnitus or um, you're seen while in service for tinnitus, um, then they can do it on a, on a direct basis. They can just say, okay, yeah, you do have tinnitus. It was documented in your service treatment records. Here we go. Um, here's your examination. You still have complaints of tinnitus. All right, you have that link, so here's your 10% for tinnitus. Um, and, and acoustic trauma during service, I talked a little bit about that. That could be anything. That could be the rifle range. Um, you know, everybody in the military pretty much has to do uh, qualifying on, on with weapons, um, you know, at some point. Uh, if, you're, if you're in the military and you're uh, working for Motor T and you're working on diesel mechanics, you know, you're, you're working on the, the five tons, the deuce and a halves, um, tanks, um, any, anything like that where you're exposed to the, the diesel engines or, or loud noises that way. Um, and this isn't, I'm, I'm not giving you an all-inclusive list. I'm just giving you some examples here. Uh, people who work near the flight line. If you're working by the flight line and you've constantly got jets going off, going by you, um, absolutely, you can get service connected for that too. So in a September of 2010, the VA um, actually sent a FAST letter. It's, it's called FAST Letter 1035, and th that's how the VA communicates their some changes through the VA. They call them FAST letters. Um, so in September of 2010, the, the, the VA actually came up with, in collaboration with the different um, branches of the military, they came up with this FAST letter, um, and it's it, it, what it did was it modified the development process in claims for hearing loss and or tinnitus. Um, and what it came out with was an exposure list. So the VA has actually conceded that if you were in certain MOSs while you were in service, um, they can concede noise exposure based on that. All right. For example, I, I started off my life in the Marine Corps with the air wing. I worked for 2nd Land Battalion, and um, I was ex I worked on ground air missiles, all right, blowing up airplanes. Uh, we had a live fire. Um, we were at a live fire exercise, and we actually had a misfire go off. And uh, I worked on the launchers at the time, and I was exposed to that acoustic trauma while I was in. Now, if you uh, 
if if you cross reference um, my MOS with the with the probability chart, you know it's a high probability. And what they do is they actually broke it up into uh, into different categories. They have it's either highly probable, moderately probable, or low probability. Okay, so if you're highly probable, um, chances are you're going to get an examination just based on your statement saying um, I have tinnitus. You'll get an examination for that, but during that examination, you're still going to want to elaborate. So let's go back to in in service illness. Okay. So if there's no documented in-service illness or or injury or event um, with what you can uh, associate, uh, the exposure list will be considered, like I said. They also determine that um, direct service connected connection um, may not be connected without, you can't say I have tinnitus in service and not have a current complaint of tinnitus. It's all part of that Calusa triangle, okay? So you do have to have that that current condition in order to get it uh, rated. Now, with that, the the VA said that um, said that a veteran is competent to report symptoms of hearing loss and tinnitus as a disability because symptoms of uh, hearing loss and tinnitus are uh, you're you're capable of lay observation on that. All right, which means you can diagnose your symptoms on that one. Now that's the rare one because every other condition you're you you really can't um diagnose yourself with it okay <laughs> going back to uh in service um if you guys need a copy or you want a copy of that fast letter it is actually available online um you can get all the information uh off the internet on that so if you're not sure if your uh if your mos specific mos was covered um you can you can google it um google's your friend you can Google it and you can look and see if, if your MOS falls on there. Now, just because your MOS does not fall on that list um, doesn't mean that you, you're you not going to get service connected for that or it's impossible for you to get service connected for that condition. Uh, Mark, our uh, Eric, our, our producer backstage, he was telling us a story. Do you remember that story? Yes. Um, I think it's important, too. I want to clarify, although there's no test for the, the tinnitus itself for the CMP exam, the CMP exam, you'll still have a conversation with the examiner. They're still going to ask you questions, what your MOS, what your job title was while you were in service. When did the tinnitus you know, begin? When did you start noticing that your ears started ringing? So there's a lot of important questions, even though there's no test for the subjective claim, questions that are going to be asked. It's important that you're prepared and, and know how to, to go into that exam with how to properly answer the questions to know for sure it's going to help with that connection piece. Right. So writing up, uh, you know, filling out a 4138, um, a 4138 with a, a description of what happened. So with my condition on tinnitus, I was actually denied. <laughs> I was denied uh, tinnitus. Um, so what I did is I, I went back in and I appealed the decision and I wrote up a 4138, and this was before the AMA where you actually did a, an actual appeal. Um, I, I filled out a 4138. I stated the 38 CFR reference, and I uh, with the with the fast letter two um, for noise exposure. And uh, I, I just if you're going to write a statement, just make sure it's thorough to the point. Um, you know, this happened while I was in service. Uh, and it may not be documented. I mean, you know, you're in a combat situation and there's a lot of noise in a combat situation. There's there's a lot going on. And, you know, ringing in the ears is probably the least of your concerns and the least of your worries. So, you know, you're not having that documenta documented, you know, you're not going back to the to the rear echelon saying, hey, by the way, I got tinnitus in my ear. I don't know if I can go on. It's not really going to yeah. Um, so writing that good statement and writing that that solid statement on a 4138 um, really helps out your claim. OK, so if you don't have one of those MOSs and and I use combat as an example, but, um, you know, obviously in combat, you're going to have in theater operation. You're going to be um, in theater metal more than likely. Um, you might get a, a, a combat medal while you're there. And those are all good signs of, of acoustic trauma as well. So the main thing is the acoustic trauma while you're in service. Um, 
So, you know, obviously you need to have those three things. You need to have the current symptoms, which is could be your lay evidence, okay? You need to have uh, uh, evidence of hearing loss and or tinnitus while you're in service, all right, documented through acoustic trauma in your, in your service treatment records, you know, um, anything like that, all right? And then um, it's basically just filing the claim after that, all right? Um, one last thing on, on the tinnitus. Tinnitus is, like I said, it's the most commonly claimed condition, but tinnitus can always be a really good starting point also. Um, you know, so, so Mark, if you get a, if you get a veteran that comes in and they really don't have, they're not certain, let's just say they're not service connected for anything. Um, what's a good path that you would follow to potentially get them service connected and, and, you know, what, what would you do first? Do you think? Yeah, that's honestly a, a large population of our veteran community whenever they go to apply for their benefits and, and they finally begin the process, that amount of time has passed and, and they haven't gone to the VA, they don't have the records. So they are worried about the evidence to be able to actually get these conditions service connected. Um, for me, even tinnitus is almost like a gateway claim, right? The, because of how we can secondary connect and use other conditions to tie conditions to actually get them service connected through the VA. That is a claim that we can use. And although it's, it's low in value, 10 or 0%, uh, that 10% ultimately opens the door to, to be limitless. I mean, everything from <clears throat> tying it to uh, lifestyle impact to where, you know, the, like I said earlier on the phone, talking to my clients, being not able to have as much time as other individuals who can speak to clients who may not suffer or have tinnitus, they're one step ahead because you know they're able to put in that time. So there, there's different factors. Uh, you know, migraines is is a, something that can be caused by tinnitus. So being able to to use the tinnitus claim to your advantage to tie the other conditions that you got going on that have higher value in order to get that service connection that you may not have gotten if you tried to go direct. Right. And, and, you know, so I'm, I'm just kind of taking a look at some of the questions over here. Number one, there is no time limit for filing. All right. If you, and, and, you know, we're talking about tinnitus right now, but that's any service connected condition. There is no time limit on filing. So tinnitus, for example, you were in infantry while you were in service, you've been out 20 years. Um, the main thing is, the main thing is making sure that you can relate that tinnitus to acoustic trauma or to an event in service that caused that tinnitus, all right? I've seen it where people have gone in for an examination um, 10 years later and they said, oh yeah, my tinnitus just started yesterday, right? Well, obviously if it just started yesterday, that's not a link to service. So it's just make, it's important that you, you make sure that you emphasize the link to service, okay? And uh, yes, it is absolutely possible to be service connected for um, for tinnitus and not hearing loss. Uh, hearing loss in and of itself is, it's hard to get service connected for hearing loss at anything <clears> than <throat> 0% rating. Um, you have to be almost deaf to get anything above, above 0%. All right, so the value in that claim would be the tinnitus. All right. Um, yeah, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of reading off some of the questions right here. Yeah, I saw that Taz Mim said, 10-year medic, flight line, sirens from the fire department, police and ambulances, um, firearms training, strong case, question mark. Yes, those are definitely all going to be loud acoustic exposures that we were talking about. Right. And there's another question here from Larry Davis. Uh, when I was in, never heard of tinnitus. As civilian, I drove tractor trailer over the road, used truck mortar as white noise at night to drown out ringing. Um, yeah, absolutely. So when you go in for your tinnitus examination, they're going to ask you about that event, that service event that happened. But they're also going to ask you about what you've done since service. Um, you know, they're going to ask you if you if you ride motorcycles, if you uh, if you work a construction job, they're going to ask you different questions. Um, obviously, now in 2020 and 2021, Hearing protection has gotten a lot better. I mean, everybody knows about the 3M um, lawsuit that's going on as far as the hearing protection went. Hearing protection has gotten a lot better. 
as and as long as you can link as long as you can continue to link your tinnitus with that event that you had in service um it really it really um i'm not gonna say it's irrelevant what you do now but it holds low probative value so as long as you link it to what's going on in service uh you should be golden you should be golden um, and if you're not fight it because there's no reason that you shouldn't be right uh so um that's that's pretty much what we have on the tinnitus realm um tinnitus is like i said it's the most commonly claimed condition there is no test for it the the symptoms are subjective uh, you should have an event in service. You should have a current complaint. Draw those two together uh, with a nexus. Um, and remember, you are competent. Veterans are competent uh, to report symptoms of hearing loss tinnitus as a disability. Um, so you're capable of, of writing up that lay observation. So make sure, uh, make sure you're able to do that. Um, even if your MOS is listed as low probability, you still have a chance. Yeah. Yeah, even if you're I'm, so, I had a veteran one time who was uh, worked in S one, and S one is the the head shed or the the um, they're the ones that write up all your your orders and stuff like that. Um, admin, um, and this is this was back when before computers. So this this particular veteran was working in a loud room with uh, typewriters. All right, and believe it or not, that constant typewriter noise can can be can cause acoustic trauma. So we were able to get that veteran service connected 10% for tinnitus based on working in that room. Like I said, it's just making sure you draw that strong link to what's going on or what happened in service. Yeah. yeah. Um, Curtis Dean, I was in the army band 10 years and my hearing is not the greatest. I can understand that. Um, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so, I mean, you could build a strong case for that too. I, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly confident they didn't issue hearing loss, or I mean, sorry, they didn't issue hearing aids, or, or anything like that to uh, people in the band. You know, they didn't give you the cans to wear over your ears or earplugs to put in your ears. So, absolutely. Um, Mark, you want to help me out with some of these questions here? Yeah, yeah, I think it's important to add too. You just, you just touched on it. I wanted to throw out there that even though hearing loss is one of the hardest conditions as far as the getting rated <clears throat> when you're rated at zero percent you're still service connected so you have that connection to where you might not be as deaf as the va requires to get the rating now but down the road in the future 5 10 15 20 whenever it is at that time since you have that connection if at that point your hearing's worse or at that point you need hearing aids then, then you're covered. You're good. You can file for that increase. You get those those hearing aids covered by the VA. So it's just long term. It's important as well, not just the short term. Right. And um, uh, Leo Rodriguez had a question. Um, medical records are lost. So back in 1973, there was a fire at RMC, which is a record management center that holds a lot of veterans' records, and it mainly affected the Army. Um, it mainly affected the Army, and it also affected Air Force records up till H. So there were some situations when I was a Raider where we didn't have medical records to go off of. Um, all we had was a DD-214. And and typically, the DD-214, is <clears throat> that's enough to get you an examination, especially if you're on the highly probable list as far as, uh, as, far as the, the – that's what I'm looking for – the probability of having tinnitus. Sorry. So um, that was enough to get an examination, of course. That was the foot in the door. We were able to get an examination, and then the veteran was able to move on with everything else from there. If you do have an exit exam, and that's the only medical record you have, if you only have an exit exam and it shows tinnitus on that exit exam, by all means, submit that evidence um, because it is valuable evidence. It, is, is, it could be enough evidence to get you an examination as well. Um, once again, it's that current complaint, it's that event and service, and it's that nexus. So writing a strong statement um, would definitely help. Um, Rob, Michael. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I said Michael Langlano, hopefully I didn't butcher that, <clears throat> asked, how do you get a medical nexus letter linking migraines and tinnitus? Great question. Go to our website, get signed up with the 
our program and we'll be able to connect you with the independent medical network that we have and they can get you that that nexus letter linking those two things together they'll have to do the review go through the records obviously have the conversation with you but at the end of the day they can get you that piece of evidence that you need to to tie it together and get it to the va absolutely so i'm going to handle two questions here matt smith uh, the MOS, Donnie Witten just posted the, M uh, the MOS probability list. All right. So that's in the that's in the chat. And Rob Taylor, is it possible to connect anxiety to panic depression to tinnitus? Yes. So typically, um, you know, I have ringing in the ears and there are, there are a lot of times with that ringing in the ears causes me a lot of anxiety. Um, you know, it's, it's constant and it's it sometimes can be just downright painful. All right, because it gets so loud, you miss out on conversations, you miss out on things. Um, so absolutely, you know, anxiety, panic, depression, um, that's that's all that's all part of that lifestyle impact. Um, looking at, at, at a, an SSD claim due to tinnitus. Yeah, um, sleep. I know sleep's a big one for a lot of veterans, right? I'm, I'll go to lay down at night. I'm ready to, you know, call it a day. And then all of a sudden the ears start ringing and I'm, I'm up for another until until it just rides the time out. So, uh, you know, insomnia, sleep conditions are conditions as well that <clears throat> insomnia itself falls under one of the 31 mental health symptoms, which that lifestyle impact, right? That not being able to sleep because it's tinnitus, now that 10% rating has the potential to turn into the 30, 50, 70, you know, 100 rating for the mental health conditions as well. Right, now when you say sleep conditions, let's not, let's not confuse, uh insomnia with sleep apnea okay so insomnia is is a mental condition which tinnitus definitely can cause those mental conditions but you'd be very hard pressed to find a connection between sleep apnea which is a respiratory condition sleep apnea and tinnitus um so you know there's yeah sleeping conditions but sleeping more on the fact that you can't get sleep because the ringing in your ears is so bad which in turn causes a lot of other conditions um yeah, so absolutely. Um, Ed Stoll, USMC, Semper brother, 58 to 62. Um, never filed for anything, really never made aware of benefits other than burial and education. Um, no ear protection ever. Um, I don't know if you're a client with us right now, but we can post the link. Um, we can definitely help you out. And, and 58 to 62, you never filed for anything. That's that's a, that's a clean slate. We can, we can definitely work with you. That's... You know, even if it is a tinnitus claim to get your foot in the door, 0311, which is which is uh, infantry, um, grunt, which is a grunt. All right, 0341, TAD to aircraft carrier, which means you're around a lot of loud noises with those planes coming off of the catapult. Um, absolutely. Hit us up, Ed. Maria Hennig asked if 10% for tinnitus is the max the VA awards, and I actually just caught myself in a mistake because I said 10% or zero earlier. And it's either 10% or not service connected. There's no zero for tinnitus. Just to clarify, if you heard me say that earlier, um, that's the 10%. If it goes through, if not, it's not service connected. Right. 10% um, is what they are giving now. However, back in the day, if you got service connected for tinnitus, it was 0%. So if you oh, are no. service connected for tinnitus and you see a 0% there, go in and ask for an increase because 10% is is the really it's the only it's the only rating they give for tinnitus now so you're absolutely right mark um you know i i didn't come across a whole lot of those but there are those out there so if you're if you're an older veteran that filed a while ago and you're at zero percent go in and ask for an increase um that that'll they, they'll raise it to ten percent without question all right uh let's see uh virginia did you did you find the list donnie could you post that list one more time please Chip Gilbert, look at that. These guys are for real, are the real deal, 40 to 80% in six weeks. Right on. 30% for insomnia, have ringing in the ear, but it's not rated. Well, once again, if if you're if you know if you're not a client of ours, uh, we'll post uh, the our our link in the in the chat. Um 30% for insomnia. Honestly, I feel like you're you're extremely underrated. Uh, the average rating for a mental health condition currently is like 70%. 
Um, and and if you do have ringing in the ears and you can relate that to service, that's that's a 10% claim there as well. All right. I see a lot of comments that are saying a lot of denials, right? Because the VA is the VA. A lot of denials here. Guys, whenever if, if you're denied for tinnitus or hearing loss, whenever you're given that decision letter, you guys can take a look and they'll tell you exactly why it wasn't granted. Uh, that way you can see, hey, I was the tinnitus was not granted because there was no nexus. You see that now you know, okay, now I need to get a nexus to get that connection, and then you can continue the process as far as how you're gonna get that, whether that's signing up with us, uh, your private doctors, uh, but that decision letter will explain to you exactly what you need to do in order to get it granted. Uh, we do have Jerome Maxwell ask the question too, the Air Force changed the MOS designation for my job, how can I find out the new one? Um, if you know the old one, like I said, this came out in 2010. So if you know the old one, um, it would just be easier to look it up that way. Um, as far as cross-referencing or, or looking up what the new one is, um, I'm, I'm really at a loss for that. Um, that's a good question. I, I do plan on, on looking that up and seeing if I can find that out. Um, sometimes if you Google it, it will tell you what the old designation was um, and or what the new designation is. So that might be um, that might be a way that you could get that answer as well. These are good questions. I, I really appreciate the questions coming in. Um, you know, if you have questions that are not necessarily re related to tinnitus, uh, we do have time to answer some of those questions as well. Um, I'm already service connected for migraines, but the ringing in my ears when I go to a quiet area makes my migraines worse. I can say it affects my life by making them worse, correct? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. If the ringing in your ears, that goes back to that lifestyle impact and the migraines just solidify it. So. Uh, with migraines, um, you know, it's rated off of, of uh, prostrating attacks. So, you know, if, if at the 50% level, if you're missing work, it's causing an economic impact on you. You're missing work because of it. Um, you know, you've got to lay down. You've got to you've got to take naps. You got to sleep. Um, you know, things like you got to be in a dark room. Um, you have the attacks quite often. That that is definitely a lifestyle changer. And if the if the, the ringing in your ears exacerbates that, then by all means, yeah, that's that's lifestyle impact all day long. So if you're not diagnosed while in the military or did not claim tinnitus on your exit interview, can you say absolutely, uh, Grupo? You can still you can still claim it. Um, yeah, it's just like I said, it's just you know a lot of guys. Like I said at the beginning, a lot of people. Um, go to the rifle range while they're in the service and they're firing rifles at the rifle range while they're on, in service. And, you know, going through Marine Corps boot camp, you've got drill instructors yelling at you. So you obviously have one of your, one of your hearing, you know, your hearing protection out of your ear so you can hear what they're yelling at you. Um, that's acoustic trauma. Uh, you can, you can draw that, that nexus or get that nexus to, to um, from tinnitus to that time. As long as you have a current complaint, you're good to go. Yeah, you can definitely. Um, just because you're not on the probability list, you can definitely still file for for tinnitus. Yeah, and let me. Can you have tinnitus but no hearing loss? I had audiology doctor tell me that being exposed to explosives wasn't a cause of my tinnitus. Brian, I would find a new doctor. Um, <laughs> you can't have tinnitus without hearing loss. I am a living, breathing example. I have tinnitus and I do not have any hearing loss. So I would get a second opinion for sure on that. Uh, I want to clarify too, Therese Cardenas asked, I thought we didn't need a nexus if we can self-diagnose. Um, and with every VA claim, you have to have a diagnosis and you have to have a nexus, hands down, in order to get it to go through. Uh, what I was talking about is if you had applied for tinnitus and they denied you, in order to understand why they denied you looking on that decision letter, if the cause or the reason was because of the nexus, then you would want to get a nexus letter. Um, I think there was confusion because obviously the presumptive list and, and going off of the MOS, I just wanted to make sure that I clarified that for you, Therese. Right on. Wade Davis, been denied three times for tinnitus. Last denial noted, we have confirmed you were exposed to hazardous noise environments, helicopter crew chief from before and after. Um, I would, I would, I would almost need to look at, at the, so here's another thing too. Okay, Wade. Um, and this is for all veterans. When you're denied for a condition, 
make sure that you're going back to the VA. That denial letter that they send mm -hmm. out now, um, although it tells you whether you're granted or denied, is actually inadequate. Or Yeah, it's inadequate. If you call the 1-800-827-1000 number and ask them for the actual rating, the ratings, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, Mark? <laughs> the actual the rating. rating decision and the code sheet, it gives a, it gives a laid out, it tells you exactly why you were denied. OK, so um, if you were denied because um, they're saying that you don't have a current diagnosis or you were denied because they're saying that you don't have a nexus, um, whatever the reason is you're denied, you could potentially look at a higher level review, um, which you're able to review the current medical evidence um, that was submitted already. You, you can't submit any new medical evidence at that point. You can, however, uh, submit a statement um, or you could potentially look at doing a uh, uh, supplemental claim and, and providing that information, either whether it's the nexus you're missing or the or the diagnosis you're missing or whatever it is you're missing. And that goes for all conditions, not just tinnitus. Um, that, that rating decision is a roadmap to your success. All right, that rating decision will tell you exactly why the VA denied it. Um, and it'll also tell you why they granted it. And it'll tell you the next higher step you need to get an increase. So that is your roadmap for success. Um, once again, 1-800-827-1000. Um, they do have the ability to email that to you, and it's really quick. It takes about 5-10 minutes once you get in touch with them. It takes them about 5-10 minutes to get that over to you, emailed to you. Do I need a nexus for increasing IBS? No. Once, once you're service connected for a condition, that nexus has already been created. The VA has already conceded that you, you have this condition. Um, so all you need to do is just, uh, first off, I would look at the rating schedule and make sure you have the symptoms for the next higher level, um, or the rating decision. Like I said, you could look at that too. And then, um, you just simply ask for an increase. Dr. Wanda Chestnut asked or stated, I want to fix this for her. She said, I submitted my claim in August and still haven't received a response. They said that they are waiting for my prior service records from the National Personal Records Center. Is this normal to take this long if they have everything else? I figured that was a great question since we just touched on that this morning with the fact that the Records Center um, and the impact that they've had with COVID and everything, there has been delays. So it is normal. I, I know it sucks, but we just gotta be patient and keep doing what we're doing uh, and, and wait it out, man. That's, that's all we can do with everything that's going on, but it will come, the time will happen. Right. Um, there was another question in here about, uh, so what we do, we are a consulting um, coaching company. Uh, so actually going in and filing a 526 easy for you, no, we can't do that. Um, we do have coaches that can help you walk through that process. Uh, you know, not, not filing it for you, but they can help you walk through it and uh, advise you on, on how to complete it. Um, because it is a process, there is a process when you're going into va.gov and you're filling out that 526EZ, um, knowing when to, to put documents in or when not to put documents in. And uh, like I said, we can't submit that for you, but we can definitely coach or, or uh, we can coach you through it. Absolutely. Sergio. Aaron asked, what if he was denied 10 years ago for tinnitus? Can he file again? Yes. There's no time frames. There's no time limits. Uh, if you've already applied and you were denied, then we will file a supplemental claim. You can get the evidence that you need to be able to have, hopefully, a more successful turnout. Yeah, I was just reading that one too, Eric. Thank you. Um, I went to my audiology, audiology who discovered my tinnitus. Is that enough to move forward? It's definitely enough to move forward as long as you have that link to service, okay? Tinnitus in and of itself is a... Is, uh, you know, you've got to make sure you have that nexus, that link to your service. Once you have that link to your service, um, definitely move forward with it. And and the VA will probably, uh, they'll probably give you a CMP exam for a hearing loss tinnitus exam. I have insomnia, but I take gabapentin for anxiety. And my doctor gave it to me for sleep aid, but the ringing in my ears deprived me of my sleep. I wake up with it, go to bed with it. Sometimes it causes my anxiety levels to increase. What can I do? Um, yeah, like 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 we're saying, the secondary conditions, the secondary claims that you can stem from just this this one claim. If it's impacting your life that much, 
uh, and causing these issues than the secondary claim of, of mental health, which are, you know, high value claims are things that we can go for to help get tied and, and not only get treated, but get you the compensation benefits that, that you deserve with it. Um, as well as the medication guys. So not only can you tie the mental health symptoms or the, the migraines, not only can you tie these, these conditions to the tinnitus itself, but say you have the migraines connected to your tinnitus and then you take medication for the migraines. Now you opened up a whole nother door to, Hey, whatever symptoms or things that you're facing because of the medication that you're taking, those are now considered conditions that we can claim as well. So that's how you can see how one claim alone can really open the door uh, to, to get you to the rating that you deserve. Absolutely. So, and, and you saying that, so um, if you're, uh, tinnitus can actually be caused by some medications as well. So if you have, if you're taking medications for PTSD, um, you know, any other condition, uh, there is the potential that your medication can cause tinnitus. So um, it, it can also cause other conditions like uh, erectile dysfunction. It can cause uh, GERD, different conditions, acid reflux. It can cause different conditions. So um, make sure you're looking at what the potential side effects are for that, can, for that medication that you're taking. Um, there was, I, I want to reiterate with everybody that, um, and I know that sleep apnea are, that, that's a huge claim right now. Everybody's getting sleep studies done and they want to file for sleep apnea. And that's, that's wonderful. That's awesome. But remember trying to connect a, a condition like tinnitus, um, you know, to, to uh, obstructive sleep apnea. I mean, you're talking about ringing in your ears and it affects your, you're saying it affects your respiratory condition. So that that is a really, you're fighting an uphill battle. I'll just put it that way. You're fighting an uphill battle. That's that's a tough one. Now, you know, tonight is causing a mental condition like we've talked about um, all this, this whole time. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. It can cause mental conditions, um, you know, a lifestyle impact, depression, yeah, I'll never, I'll never forget. Whenever I contacted VACI, the one of the first things, I first call with my coach. We were having the conversation, and I, of course, I was excited. I was ready to go. I'd been watching all the videos and, and keeping up with it. Um, but I, uh, at, at the end of the day, I thought I had the plan mapped out in my head to tell the coach, "Hey, this is what I want to go for. This is what I want to do." And then the coach just said, "Hey, man, there's more than one way to sink at." The end of the day, as long as morally, ethically, we get you to the rating that you deserve, leave it up to the coaches, leave it up to us to come up with a strategy and, and, and game plan. We, we do this every single day. So we know the ins and outs of, of what's going to be more effective and efficient. So just trust the process, trust your coaches, and then we'll take you to the promised land. And, and this being Facebook, if you don't have a coach, but you're interested in what we're doing and you're interested in becoming a, an elite member and getting that elite service, uh, by all means, we have the link in the uh, in the chat. OK, if you want to. Yeah, if you want to work with VA Claims Decider, there it is right there. Um, and I'll tell you that that um, Mark and I are not the exception to the rule here as far as, you know, we're doing this this uh, Facebook live, um, but we have qualified coaches across the board that, that have, uh, have a success rate. I mean, the company has a success rate of over 91% right now, and that's with uh, increases of 30 or more. So just a little plug there. Um, I do have some other questions in here I'd like to answer. Uh, Tandy, um, if, if we are waiting for docs from St. Louis and it takes a year or more, will the VA close the application or continue to wait? The VA will actually continue to wait, all right? Um, that's part of their duty to assist. If you're not getting satisfaction or they're not getting you a doctor right away, um, I would definitely call either call the, the White House hotline or call the uh, the 1-800 number, the customer service number and uh, speak to them. Um, you know, it shouldn't take them a year for you to get a, an examination. All right. That that's uh, because right now the VA is not yeah. doing CMP examinations at their facility. They're contracting it out. So um, I'm aware of the St. Louis area. There's a lot of doctors down there. There's a lot of uh, psychiatrists down there. Um, surely they can find a way to contract something out to get you your, your examination. All right. Um, yeah. Cynthia, Depending Moran. How many, go, ahead, go ahead, Mark. 
I said, depending on how many claims you have too, the VA can defer as well. So if it's, if it's getting to the point, um, they can defer that one claim. And if you have additional claims, they can still move those forward and grant those. Um, Cynthia Moreno. All right. So the thing with, with mental conditions, uh, PTSD is a mental condition. You can only be service connected for one mental condition. So, um, if, if you're rated for PTSD and you want to come back and claim anxiety, uh, essentially what you're doing is just asking for an increase in your, your PTSD, um, the, the rating schedule for those mental conditions, anxiety, major depressive disorder, major depressive disorder uh, insomnia, um, all those conditions, the rating schedule is the same, okay? Um, it, it's all based on the symptoms. Um, that being said, when you go for a PTSD, let's say you're 30% for PTSD, um, and you come back from that examination and they've changed your, your, your uh, diagnosis to unspecified anxiety disorder or major depressive disorder, don't be alarmed, okay? Those diagnoses, those diagnoses can change by who's doing the examination. Um, you know, they, they use the DSM-5, and uh, it's whatever that, that particular psychologist, um, psychiatrist deems you fit closer to. So it doesn't mean anything, really. Um, it just changes the, the diagnosis, but the rating schedule is the same. Okay, I hope that answered your question. Oh, let's see here. Eddie, my neurologist did a sleep study and I have sleep apnea, but the VA did not give me sleep apnea. Do I put in it as a standalone? Doc said it was related to my migraines and TMJ. Um, I don't know how sleep apnea and migraines would tie together. TMJ though, with the jaw, I could maybe see how it would affect your breathing at night. We, we questions that are kind of teeter tottered. We can do consult consultation calls with uh, Telemedica to see if if that's something that they would be able to to tie together or not. Once you reach a hundred percent, do I still need to continue to claim things? Will it change my part for my treatment? If you are a hundred percent permanent in total, you won the game. Go home. <laughs> you won. Um, I, obviously, you know, there's certain conditions and, and things that you want to make sure are, are taken care of and treated. Uh, but as far as the, the compensation and the benefits portion of it, you applying for additional after you've already <clears throat> beat the, the last level of the game is opening the door to possibly uh, reevaluations. And there's just there's no need for it. Right. Absolutely. I was going to I was going to expand on that as a Raider. So, um, you know, yeah, you're right, Mark. Once you've reached that 100%, and and once you've reached that 100% in the United States, uh, you can go to the VA facility and be treated for anything, including dental. Okay. Um, now, if you're overseas, it's a little different story. And so, you know, if you're overseas and and let's say you you're 100%, but now you've got GERD, um, a lot of times they won't treat you for that GERD unless you have the the, the rating for it, the service connection for it. So I can understand that, but you got to be really careful because if you're if you're 100% and you're and let's say you have a right knee condition that's part of that 100% and you go in and ask for a left knee condition, um, service connection, now you've opened yourself up to reevaluate that right knee. All right, which could potentially lower the rating. They could potentially to reduce. It can lower that rating and take you out of that 100% realm. Okay. Um, so I do advise, just me personally, I advise once you've hit that 100% level, yeah, you've won the game. Um, if you're permanent in total, uh, you're filed away. They don't pull it back out and look at it 10 years later, 20 years later, and, and you know, just to mess with you. So once you've hit that 100% range, then, then permanent in total, um, you know, I, I just let it go. John, John Crew wants to know who your football players in the picture are. Uh, that's uh, Howie Long and um, <laughs> oh yeah, Lyle Alzado. I don't know how I forgot Lyle Alzado. I'm just so focused on tinnitus. <laughs> Is it typically difficult to get approved for somatic symptom disorder? It all comes down. Everything comes down to medical evidence. If you have the medical evidence that you need, it doesn't matter what the claim is. It doesn't matter what we're trying to go for. If you have a current diagnosis and you have a nexus that connects it 
to your service or it's aggravated because of your service, then <clears throat> difficult as in you're going to put in work. We're going to guide you and, and coach you through the way. Um, but at the end of the day, when we submit our fully developed claim, it's it's ready to go. It's ready for the VA to look at and say, hey, based on everything you've given me, we should be able to make a decision. And if they don't, or if they make one that's not one we like, then we fight. And that's what we do. Absolutely. Um, yeah, Joseph, I'm a Raiders fan, lifelong Raiders fan. Um, <laughs> all right, Ivan, I'm currently, oh, well, let, let's hit Kirk first and I'll come back to you, Ivan, all right? Uh, once you have 100% scheduler but not PNT, can you submit a request to get PNT? Absolutely. You absolutely can. So what happens with uh, if you're not found PNT, it means that you have a condition that somewhere along the line, a doctor has said or made the statement that with treatment or with medication or with this or with that, your condition could potentially get better. All right. Now, you and Owen, I know that that's not necessarily the claim, the case all the way around. So um, you can you can. And, and usually that that routine future exam is set five years out. Uh, you can, there's, there's a couple ways you can handle it. Number one, you know, you can always ask for a, a PNT consideration. All right. Um, permanent and total. Um, you can also ask for uh, an increased evaluation on whatever condition you have that's, that's holding it up. Um, I've, I've seen uh, PTSD is a common one that holds it up. Migraines is a common one that holds it up. Um, so you can ask for an increase. Um, uh, you can also have a, a doctor write a, a letter saying that that you're uh, you're permanent in total, um, that your condition, there's no way that your condition can get better and you can submit that as evidence. Um, so, yeah, there's there's ways that you can request to get uh, permanent in total. All right. See an outside doctor for my feet and some VA coming through. Um, doctors are real funny about that. Uh, you can ask. Absolutely ask. Um, some doctors will do it. Um, it's been my experience though with the Nexus letter. Uh, doctors aren't really skilled in how to write that Nexus letter because the VA is looking for certain terminology, um, whether it's at least as likely as not, less likely than not, more likely than not. Um, they're looking for certain. Um, they're cert looking for certain terminology. So uh, those doctors aren't necessarily schooled in how to write that. Um, so yeah, um, but you can always use that ev that medical evidence too as a as a part of your claim. Kevin Burroughs asked, "How how can I tell if my IMO is for PTSD? Where do I find that on my letter?" Um, if you're talking about the letter that you would have gotten through Telemedica, <clears throat> it's in your HIPAA compliant Google folder. If it's uploaded there meaning if the doctor completed it and it's been the time allotted to, to get you the document, if you scroll on that first page, it'll tell you diagnosis. It can have multiple diagnoses and it'll tell you exactly what the diagnosis is, the diagnosis code, all that good stuff. Right. Oh, Shannon, thanks. Appreciate that. Go Chiefs. Hey, Patrick Mahomes is a great quarterback. What can you say? Um, but anyway, that's that's enough about that. I'm not, I don't hate the Chiefs. Um, since, since I'm finally hundred percent, if I have a survey done through the VA, will they, or can they, what do you, what do you mean by survey, Shannon? If you're doing like a golf registry or, <laughs> and we'll come back to that as soon as Shannon types that in, um, Joseph, you have to get to 100% scheduler to get PNT and how does age factor in? First off, age does not factor in at all. All right. Not at all. Um, uh, yeah, it, it would be 100% scheduler is, is the PNT. That's the permanent total. And that's what opens you up to all the great benefits that a lot of states offer, like um, no property tax or education benefits or wiping out your student loan. That's that's what you need is that PNT uh, connection. But age definitely does not factor into it at all. All right. And Shannon did respond, respond surgery. Um, so if you have a surgery for a service-connected condition that does offer you up to a temporary 100% uh, rate for as long as you're on um, convalescence or hospitalized. All right, let me go back up to the original question here. So the way that works, typically if you're, if you're service-connected, let's, let's just take a knee for example. If you're service-connected at 30% for a knee, but you have to go in and have an, an operation on your knee, um, 
they, they submit the, you submit the documentation that shows your surgery um, and then the doctor's recommendation for convalescence. In order to qualify for that extra 100%, you have to show that you were either hospitalized for more than 21 days or you were, uh, or you're on a convalescence for 21 days or more. All right. And then once that's done, once that convalescence, so that hospitalization period is over with, they just lower you back down to the level you were before. Okay. Um, so if you were 30%, they call it a staged rating. So you go from 30% to 100% back down to 30%. All right. That doesn't mean that a rater might get a whim and say, well, six months from now, I want to do, and some conditions require it actually, um, six months from now, I want to do an examination to see where you're at. Okay, so um, typically with the musculoskeletal system, that doesn't happen, but there are conditions, heart conditions, um, things like that. All right. So um, if we didn't have time to get to your question, I do apologize. There are a lot of good questions in here. Um, <clears throat> if you, uh, you know, once again, we'll put that that link up. If, if you want to become an elite member and, and, you know, talk to a coach, investigate, um, see what's going on here, um, by all means, come join us. Um, we have a plethora of coaches that can help answer questions. Um, and like I said, I do apologize if we didn't get to every question, but the time now is 12.02 and, uh, we're going to return you back to your regularly scheduled programming. <laughs> Thank you. I'll have a good one. Have a great day. It was great. It was a great time.